This is not going to be a physics lesson. This is going to be a simple and intuitive explanation of what is going on with electromagnetism. But I think it would make a good lead-in to a physics lesson should you ever be interested. Hopefully it will be that one little leg up to help you understand once you get to the right-hand rules and cross products and field densities and flux tensors and whatnot else. But for now, Let's put it simply. Conceptually, electricity and magnetism are separate things. But in a very real sense, electricity and magnetism, or rather electric fields and magnetic fields, are actually the same thing, in the sense that a coin has two sides, but it's one object. In your atom, you have your protons and your electrons, and a whole bunch of other stuff that doesn't matter. Your proton has one unit of positive charge, your electron has one unit of negative charge. Physics does not care about what we define these to be. This is so that we can talk about them more easily. All that matters is their opposite. This object is a boring, lifeless hunk of matter. It's not doing anything. It doesn't have an electric field. It doesn't have a magnetic field. It's not doing anything. Except, right now, it actually has both. Every proton and every electron has an electric field at all times. But this does not have an electric charge, despite both of these having electric charges, because they're an equal number. Protons and electrons, in equal number, balancing each other out at equilibrium, despite every single bit of matter inside this having an unavoidable electric charge and electric field, this doesn't on the macroscopic scale of a human being, because of that equilibrium. When you create a charge imbalance, you get your voltage, electricity flows, and so forth. And you need to put work into a system to have that happen. Your charge imbalance creates an electric field through a conductor, you plug your battery into wires and stuff, you have to do work to separate the charges. You have to put energy in to get energy out. So that's the easy part. Charged particles have electric fields at all times. There you go. Now, a moving electric field is also a magnetic field. The key word is moving. This, right now, has a magnetic field. Every single one of these protons and electrons is moving, and it has a magnetic field because of that. But, once again, Here's a magnet. Here's it not sticking. Why is that? It's the equilibrium again. We have another convention for a magnet. Imagine a simple bar magnet. You've got your north pole and your south pole, and we draw the lines of force going around the magnet, and we do arrows going from north to south. The laws of physics, once again, do not care about any of this. This is a convention so that we can talk about it more easily. A moving electric field is a magnetic field. Electrons are very wiggly. Everything wiggles. All matter never sits still. Absolute zero temperature means it's perfectly still. You can never get there, blah, blah, blah. But electrons are super wiggly, whether you consider it orbitals or shells or whatever you want to call it. The protons basically sit there and vibrate a little bit. The electrons are all over the doggone place. Since their electric fields are moving, those electric fields have magnetic fields. Every electron that's wiggling like crazy has a magnetic field. But the electrons are wiggling all over the place, but not in a coordinated fashion. In this right here. They're wiggling all over, in all directions, at all times, which means all their magnetic fields are spraying haphazardly in every direction and canceling all of them out again. How do we have magnetic things? How do we have a permanent magnet? How do we have materials that are not magnetic to each other, but will be attracted by a magnet, the same magnet not attracting something else? It's all about coordination. Every single electron, every single charged particle, but the electrons are a lot more wiggly, so they're much more important. Every single one of them is one of these. It's a little magnet, and it's got a north pole and a south pole and all of that based on its motion, because it's moving. A moving electric field is a magnetic field, and the direction of its motion determines the direction of the magnetic field. You can take a physics class if you care about exactly what those things are. But basically, every time it moves, it's moving this way, it's moving this way, it's moving this way. It has magnetic fields related to that direction. You might also look up on the internet and find the term about electron spin. A permanent magnet is a material that has electrons that are wiggling and causing magnetic fields, and the physical structure is such that they're wiggling together. They're wiggling in a concerted fashion, just the arrangement of the molecules. They're wiggling in a, such a fashion that they are 
combining, instead of being scattered randomly, they're combining. A bunch of them pointing this way, a bunch of them pointing this way all at the same time. And so each individual contribution by a single electron adds to the other, to the other, to the other, and it adds up to a magnet. A material that is not magnetic, but is attracted by a magnet, is a material whose electrons can line up this way. They can be coerced into wiggling in concert. And while an external magnetic field is applied, they do. And so they attract each other. But when it's taken away, the electrons didn't have any particular reason to stay in that configuration, so they just go back to normal. Some of them do, a few of them stay, and every time I touch like this, this material is very, very, very slightly magnetized. And you can permanently magnetize a magnetic material. I got a little thing from the hardware store that can magnetize a steel screwdriver head, for example. But that's what it is. Electrons are wiggly. Electrons have electric fields. Moving electric fields are magnetic fields. If they wiggle concertedly, because the, the structure, the shape of the magnetic field, the orientation of the magnetic field is dependent upon how the electron is moving. So if they're moving in a concerted fashion, the fields add up and you get a magnet. That at its core is electromagnetism. Electric fields, magnetic fields, that's it. But this explains how we can do things with this. Imagine you have a wire. My finger is a wire. The direction I'm pointing is conventional current flow. So the electrons, the electrons are going this way. So conventional current as we draw it on a circuit diagram is going out my finger. If the wire is just sitting there, just in the air, nothing going on, it is electrically neutral. It is uncharged. There's no electric charge because everything's at equilibrium. Equal protons to electrons. They're all evenly distributed and they're all wiggling just like this. The wire and the eraser are neutral electrically and magnetically for the same reason. Their electrons are not doing anything in a coordinated manner. When you apply a voltage, they move in aggregate in a coordinated manner, and the whole wire has an electric field. Before that, only the battery really does. But when you have that imbalance, you have an electric field to the entire wire. But more importantly, when you have electric current and you are making these electrons move in aggregate, individually relative to each other, they're still wiggling and canceling each other out, but totality, in totality, they are moving through the wire this way. So conventional is this way. Thank you, Ben Franklin and everyone after him who was too lazy to fix it. But anyway, in aggregate, you have net, all right? Gross versus net. You have net, a moving electric field, which means you have a magnetic field. Electricity coming out this way by conventional current flow will create a magnetic field in a circle around the wire, like a tube. It'll go around the wire. It'll go this way. It'll go this, the right hand rule it tells you which way. So it'll go this way if the current is going that way, and it'll go this way if the current is going that way. It doesn't matter. It's one way and the other. Current this way, it turns one way. Current the other way, it turns the other way. And the strength is based on the total charge going through the current, because that's what's causing the magnetic field. The aggregate motion of the electric field of the electrons moving in aggregate causes the magnetic field. So more electrons, more magnetic field. And that is the magic. The aggregate motion of the electrons, the aggregate motion of the electric field causes a magnetic field around the wire, like a pipe around water. Here's another illustration. Here is your wire. Let's say current is coming at, let's say the electrons are coming out towards the camera. So conventional current is going into the board. You will have a magnetic field going around like so, orbiting it kind of. And obviously it's going to be strongest, closest to the charges because everything spreads out inverse square in space. Further away it is, the weaker it is. That applies to every single normal physical phenomenon. It applies to gravity and the brightness of light and sound waves. Everything that spreads out in space gets weaker as it goes away. So your wire is coming in and out of the board. The electric field is going around it all along its length. So why aren't wires that are powered, why aren't circuits attracting each other all the time? It's really weak. It's like gravity. You think of gravity as a really strong thing. People die because of gravity every day. But my ear is not being ripped off of my body by gravity. Gravity is the weakest force. Of all forces we know of in the universe, as far as I have read, gravity is actually the weakest force. It's just that Earth is really big, and the sun can attract it from so far away because the sun is really, 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 really big. There's just a lot of it, itty-bitty things. Just like 
you can have a magnetic field from each electron adding up if they're all wiggling together. So that's why. Technically, they are attracting each other because of magnetism. Just so weakly, we couldn't tell. But what if you do something tricky? What if you take your wire, instead of just having one single wire, what if you wrap it around something in a circle? So let's imagine we have this. And I'm going to slice it in half. I'm just going to slice it in half so you can see. I'll cut through the wires, and we'll do a cross-section. So once again, we have a wire. And we have a magnetic field around this wire because current is flowing. Cool. But let's have more wires. So the current is flowing, the conventional current is flowing into the board. So that wire's gone that way, and then it's going to wrap around, go down, come back up, and it's going to go into the board again right next to it. And we'll go like this, and this, and this. So what do we get? We get the same exact thing. We get the fields going around just like we did before on all of these. There's absolutely no difference. It's going around this wire, and this wire, and this wire, and this wire. But in the middle, it's coming up around this wire. See, it's clockwise the way this is going. It's going around this way, so it's going down this wire and up this wire. So in the middle, in the middle here, they're opposing. Essentially, it's gone. Essentially, in the middle of these wires, the magnetic field is gone because it's opposed. And on the sides, you just have that. Nothing happening there. But look here. It's going around and left at the bottom, and around and left at the bottom, left, left. It's going left for all of those, and they'll add up. And up here, it's going right, 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 right. It's going right over all of those, and it will add up. So in the middle, it's going to basically disappear. And on the sides, it's going to add together. And on here in the left and right, it's just a wire. We ignore that. But we get this right on one side, left on the other, when we take the coil and slit it apart. Well, that's great and all. It doesn't do much, though. It does something, but not much. But what if we do something else? I only did half the cross-section, didn't I? If I slice it, then we see the wires on the top, but also the wires on the bottom. And it's coiled the other way. The wire, as I have it now, on the bottom goes towards me, and on the top goes away, and towards me and away. So all the wires on the top, the current will be going that way. Wires on the bottom, the current will be going this way. So what happens? Let's have two rows. So we have wires here, and wires here. This is just the coil. So let's say it goes into the board here, down out of the board here, into here, out of here, into here, and coils like this in and out of the board. Once again, the same thing happens. In the middle, it cancels out. Here on the side, we just get our normal flow. And on the bottom and the top, we get the additive flow of the magnetic field. But this is the other way. This is what happens when the current is going that way. Here, the current's going the other way, which means the magnetic field is going the other way as well. So instead of the bottom facing left, the bottom faces right. Instead of the top facing right, the top faces left. And again, it goes the other way. So it's going clockwise here and counterclockwise here, and it adds the other way. But look at this. We have two left arrows next to each other. They add to each other. It's additive on top of additive. And there's a separation here, so it's weaker. You know, there's an air gap here, so it's definitely much weaker, but it still adds. And what happens over here? Well, the outside is facing right, and the outside is facing right. Now we're thinking of inside and outside of the coil. Well, the flow is up and down, so we get some up, some down, kind of splits like that, goes around, and it joins its brethren here, which all flows around, and then they come up, comes around, and they join together once more. So we've got flow, almost like shoosting up in a geyser or geyser, and then it sprays and spreads and falls back down the outside to go back in again. This is not how magnetic field lines work. This is just how it visually looks, but you get the idea. I'm describing how the lines look, and they're adding this way. Does this look familiar to you? Does this look familiar to you? Does this maybe look a little familiar to you? That's how it makes a magnet. The good old solenoid electromagnet. Because of the way we coil the wire, we force the magnetic field to interact and reinforce each other in this coordinated fashion that acts just like a bar magnet. It's tricky, isn't it? But there's one more thing to this. That's how we take electricity and get magnetism out of it. A moving electric field 
is a magnetic field. What is a moving magnetic field? It's an electric field. Once again, it's about putting energy into the system. I have a magnet, and I have a coil of wire. And I'll go ahead and touch the ends together so they're even a circuit just for fun, and I'll hold it right next to each other. And nothing's happening. The magnetic field is interacting with these coils, but nothing's happening because the magnetic field is not moving. I'm not generating electricity. If I were, I would be creating energy out of nothing. That is not how that works. But if I wiggle it, it doesn't matter how. I mean, it does if you do it exactly at the right angle, but nothing's exact. If you do it exactly at the right angle, it could cancel out and do nothing, but come on, this is a hand-woven wire and a goofy magnet. No matter what I do, there's going to be at least a little bit. If I do it right, there's going to be a lot. And I will demonstrate this in future videos as I show you how to make these things. But very simply, it's exactly the same phenomenon. You have a moving magnetic field interacting with charge carriers with the electrons and the protons, but the protons are quite firmly rooted in their nuclei. They don't really want to move. So everything just cancels out there just the same. The electrons, though, if you have a conductor, see? My nice non-conductive, non-magnetic material, I can do this all day. And I am definitely wiggling those electrons, but they don't go anywhere. You know, I will, I will force them in one direction, force them in another just a little bit by doing this. And so technically there's momentarily a teeny tiny bit of something, but it doesn't kick them in a path. There's no conductor for them to follow in aggregate. They might move microns, probably much, much less than microns, as the magnetic field moves in and out, but they're just going to sit there and it's still going to cancel out. Whereas in the wire, if it's a closed circuit and you move the magnet, you're creating an electric field. And in the same way, remember how they added together to be a magnet? In the reverse, the magnet interacts with the coils and each coil gets a flow in it. If you just have a single wire, if I just have a single wire and close the circuit and move the magnet, I am creating an electric current in this wire, but it's teeny, 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 tiny. The same reason that you don't see wires attracting each other magnetically when they have current going through them is the same reason this is really not generating electricity that we could probably even measure without the most expensive lab equipment ever made. But if you coil them, then you get that same interaction. You can put the magnet on the end of something like turns, like a windmill, and it will turn and turn and turn and turn relative to this coil. Or you could turn the coil instead of the magnet. All that matters is the magnetic field relative to the coil is moving. It's just that you've got wires plugged into the coil, so it's probably better to move the magnet than the coil. But the point is you could do it either way. But the coils, they add together. And when you spin, which I'll get into in a future video about generators and motors, this is where alternating current comes from. Because if I spin this like this, or even better, if the thing will stop clicking in, I'm trying to demonstrate. If I have this, mm, if I have this in here, let's pretend it's in there so I can get this video done, and I'm spinning it like this, right? I am creating current in one direction, and then it tapers off and current in the other direction, and it tapers off because of the way the magnetic field lines are sweeping through the coils. Because we have, you know, the arrows pointing out of the North Pole and into the South Pole, and that's just a convention once again. We just call one North and South so we can talk about it. But they are opposite. All physics cares, just like the positive and negative charges. There's no positive and negative in physics. They're opposite. Same way, the North and South Poles don't mean anything in physics, they're just opposite. And so it's going opposite directions. So if any physicists or physicist students more likely are watching this video, they've probably been screaming for quite some time and wanting to come to my apartment and lock me in my closet so that I can't do any more damage to the world. But I'd like to remind you, this is supposed to be an easy and intuitive explanation of what's going on. This is not a physics class. This is to prepare you for one or to make you not need one because all you care about is the understanding, not really being able to do it. You may never care about how to calculate magnetic flux and all that. What's magnetic flux? That's moving magnetic fields. We'll get to that in a future video. But all you have to remember is that all carriers of charge, positive and negative, protons and electrons, have electric fields all the time. A moving electric field causes a magnetic field. And in the same way, a moving magnetic field causes 
causes flux, but put more simply and symmetrically causes an electric field. And I think I hear that clicking again. If it has been, I'm so sorry. I'm trying to fix that. I don't exactly have a thousand dollar audio set up here. So that's electromagnetism. Electric fields and magnetic fields are, in a real sense, the same thing. So while you let that little gem sink in, I'll be seeing you.